thanks everybody for coming. Hopefully we'll have a couple more people clicking in here. Um, so today is May 12th, 2021. Welcome to the 10th meeting of the advisory team on policies and practices. We're gonna do as usual, our super quick rapid, rapid uh, check-in. Um, let's say one word that describes how you're feeling tonight and your favorite summertime food that you're looking forward to. We might know what Michael says, but we feel surprised. <laughs> so your favorite, how you're feeling tonight and your favorite summertime food that you are looking forward to, to uh, having outside. Anybody can, Michael. Um, I'm feeling blessed. Like I'm feeling awesome. Um, Favorite summertime food? I'm gonna throw you guys off a little bit. Uh, <laughs> watermelon with sea salt. Ooh, awesome! Great. I'm gonna have to try that. Um, anybody else want to jump in? Because sometimes I feel like a teacher, and I don't, I don't really like that. So. Hey, when sorry, we're all in the same room, I don't have to call I, on people, but I couldn't find my mic when you first asked for me, but I am here and uh, I'm feeling tired, but I'm grateful. I just uh, got back from Nashville meeting my uh, 13th grandchild. And so I am uh, I'm grateful to God for that one. But uh, my favorite food, ah, man, anything, anything good, as long as we can sit at a restaurant and enjoy it, it'd be, be <laughs> nice to do. And yeah. hello, everybody. Sorry, I missed saying hi. <laughs> Sounds good. Who else? I'll go. Let's see. I think I'm feeling um, just uh, happy. It's it's it was beautiful today. It was just amazing. Um, my favorite food is probably a meal because we always have it at the lake, and it's just. Um, Barbecue chicken breast that's slow in a crock pot all day while we're outside enjoying the sun with sweet corn and tons of fresh fruit. It's just what we have. We always have it when we're at the lake for some reason. Sounds good. Thanks. Who else? Corey. Try it again. Is oh, it no. working? No, okay. Working. All right. <laughs> yeah. I, I got new technology. I'm trying here. <laughs> um, I am feeling um, like the word is whirlwind. I don't know if that's a feeling, but it's um, that's what I'm going to say today. Um, and my favorite food is homemade potato salad. Mm. So. Yum. Sounds good. Who else? I'll go. I am feeling content. And I look forward to grilling peaches on the grill. Nice. Great. Who else? A couple more, a few more people. Sam. I am feeling extremely exhausted. <laughs> um, life just does not want to give me a break. But my favorite food I'm looking forward to this summer is probably sweet corn or corn on the cob um, and anything off the grill. Okay, good, good. We got Doug and Steve left, I think. Steve. Okay, I got in a little late, so. Uh, it sounds like uh, how we're feeling. Uh, I'm actually opposite of Sam. I'm feeling refreshed. I was uh, out of state for two weeks visiting relatives and just got back a few days ago. So uh, that was uh, good to get away from home and everything. And my favorite food this summer is anything off my smoker. Oh. Get out there and uh, Throw something on there for 12, 14 hours and tear into it. <laughs> right, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Doug, I think you're, I, yeah, Doug, you're the last one. Okay. Um, feeling, it's busy, uh, it's a busy time of year. And uh, I don't know if I change a lot of what I eat this summer. I guess it's on the grill instead of on the oven. So I guess anything that I usually eat, but grilled instead of made in the kitchen. Okay, good. All right. Well, we'll, we'll keep going here. And if, if we've, uh, I did hear from uh, Lexi and Cholaway, and they're not able to make it. Um, it looks like Yadira and Juan are missing, and the rest of us. Yep, the rest of us are here. So we're gonna we're gonna dive right in here. Um, I think this should be a fun meeting, kind of uh, brainstorming different different ideas. So before we get to that, though, before we get to that, um, I almost forgot Michael connected and he wanted to have a couple minutes um just to uh i don't know michael you've got the floor sorry about that can you guys hear me sweet um just recently um you know first of all i want to say thank you give me a couple of minutes um i just recently took a um a trip, I, I, I call it a, um, a spiritual journey to a area where I lived at, where before I moved to Minnesota and all that. And um, I was able to um, release a lot of, um, you know, 30 plus years of stress and anger and hate and pain and a bunch of stuff and um I'm, I'm i'm coming into this meeting to say that i you know i, I appreciate each and every one of you guys you know mr larson i know me and you been going back and forth with like trying to meet up and it's I want that to happen. I, I, I want to be able to touch base with you. I want to be able to feel where you're coming from, sir. On the same time, I don't want people to think that I, when, when I speak, I'm not speaking out of anger anymore. I'm not speaking out of how, however people want to put it. I'm speaking from my heart. You know, I want to understand. I want to work with that's the reason why I got involved with this. I want to be able to bring different aspects of this community together. I don't care what it is. I'm willing to work with it. Uh, Ms. Larson, I can't wait till we meet because I want to pick your brain. Um, Mr. Blaine, I can't wait to touch base with you. You know, each and every one of you guys, I just want you guys to know I'm not coming from an angered state of mind anymore, if that's the best way I can put it. I'm coming from a state of mind where I want this community to come together. That's where I come from. So hopefully we can still continue to move forward. I mean, this last week and a half, I've been out of town for a week and a half and I did a lot of soul searching. And I just, I wanna work with you guys. I don't wanna work against you. If, I don't know if that's the best way I can put it, but I don't want to take up too much time, but that's what I wanted to say. Thanks, Michael. Yay. It's awesome. Anybody? I don't I, I guess we could, does anybody want to say anything? Otherwise, we'll, that's a great way to start a meeting. <laughs> that's a great way to start a meeting. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Really. Can you say something? Sure. I just want to thank you. Say thank you to um, Mike. Um,
Did we lose you, Sam? Soul but also, I'm having a lot of technical difficulties over here. Well, let me turn my camera on, and it also keeps here. So I don't know if it's on end or um, if everybody's dealing with this or not, or if it's just me. Okay. Shoot. Well, thanks. I can maybe log off and log back on if I and see if that works. But okay, okay, good. Okay, good. Well, like I said, that was a good way to start a meeting. Let's start every meeting like this. <laughs> Someone's got a a good thing to share. Um, that's awesome. And you know, I think there's a lot of good stuff. Hopefully, from this meeting tonight. Um, the advisor team has been talking about a lot of ways, you know, after pivoting from policing, but even before that, really, it sounded like the advisory team was talking about ways that, um, you know, policing was one area, but just one area. There are so many different ways and um, avenues that the community could move into in order to become more welcoming, to make people feel like they belong, whether they just moved here, some people who've lived here for 15, 20 years might also still feel like they don't belong. Um, there are two, well, there are numerous places in the city council strategic plan that also um, dovetail into that. And number, and like you probably saw in the meeting materials, um, number 68, or in the email that came, number 68 of the council strategic plan says, research and discuss potential programs or practices revolving around building stronger neighborhoods. And then number 66 of the plan says, encourage more people of different ages and backgrounds to get involved with and participate in city government, especially as appointed and elected positions. And both of those seem to really tie into what this group has been saying. There are multiple, um, uh, multiple ways to get at that. And in the meeting materials, there were, I think, four different videos sent just to kind of you know, get the creative juices flowing. Those are on the website. So if anyone listening tonight wants to go onto the policies and practices webpage, they can go into meeting number 10 and you'll see in the meeting materials, there were um, a number of different videos. They, they talked about everything from a neighborhood small grant program, like a block program. Um, some were neighbors helping neighbors fixing up their yards or their homes. Um, one was, um, Another small kind of grant program that funded kind of like infrastructure things and in someone's, you know, in a neighborhood, like a sidewalk or a mural and others. Funded things like community events, um, ways to get people together. There are welcome parties. There are all kinds of things that you guys have, have talked about sort of, you know, as we've gone through these 9 meetings so far. Um, there was another program in Northfield called Emerging Leaders Program. So hopefully people got a chance to at least look at those, kind of see some of the different things that people were doing in their communities to connect people, um, lift up, you know, leaders who may not have seen themselves as leaders before in their community. Um, and so what we're hoping to tonight is to sort of, you know, from from that kind of listen to all of you about your ideas. They don't have to be perfectly formed ideas. That's a whole idea of brainstorming. Um, not everything has to be perfectly, you know, here's how we're gonna fund it and here's how we're gonna get it done. But the first part of the meeting will just be um, kind of talking about things um, that we have. For those who may be watching this who aren't on the team, we did have a short segment on the agenda that talked about sharing out of our survey results, but we're gonna let that go for another month so that Team members can um, talk to more people in the community. Um, so we still have the survey out and those will be, we'll have more one on one conversations and results over the course of this next month. And we can talk in June about that. Um, so the 1st thing that I was hoping we would do, and we'll have kind of a series of things that we do tonight and I'll kind of. Ask you to do things, um, hopefully soon we'll be in the same room together and we can do this differently, but. We'll talk about things. I'm going to ask you to maybe turn your camera off for 2 or 3 minutes. We've done that before. You don't have to, but where you write things down and then we share out and it's a good way to get everybody's viewpoints out on the table. The 1st thing that, um. That we're going to do is just talk about and you and, and people can just, these don't have to be big, long. Things, but what kind of impact would you want to have in red wing? Okay. 
if whatever ideas happen from tonight or next month, what in your mind looks like a red wing that you would want? What does that more welcoming red wing feel like? We're going based on this policy tool that we kind of sent out and, you know, you might have seen. Um, and a version of this was in the racial equity plan. It's something that Red Wing uses occasionally and hopes to use more often. But the idea is that you always start with the result in mind, you know, instead of planning something out and then getting to the wrong result. So if you think in your head backwards, think to a result that you want. How would you or your family feel in Red Wing if something were successful, a welcoming, belonging type of thing? Um, how would your neighbor feel? How would you feel? How, how do you want Red Wing to um, look and act as a result of anything that we talk about tonight? Do you know what I'm saying? So put aside specific ideas or specific programs or policies or practices and write down a couple things about what that Red Wing looks like to you, what it might feel like to you, your child, your neighbor. Um, your coworker, and we're going to go around the table and I'm going to just take notes so that we make sure at the end that the ideas that we're talking about might get to those results, sort of a, a, a gut check for us. Um, so we're looking at what impacts, what results, what do you want to have happen from the things that we talk about today? Pretend that it's happened. So Michael's writing stuff down. So I'm going to ask him to share out first or just everybody raise your hand. And when you raise your hand, you know, because we're all in these crazy grids, just put your hand up kind of close so I can so I can see. Then we'll get to specific ideas. Do you know what I'm asking? There. Do you know what I'm asking? Okay, Michael. I'm uh, the two biggest, my biggest, at least my opinion, is um the youth. They have a safe place, you know, somewhere where they can be kids. You know, I'm uh, I'm a mentor, and actually today. I was talking to a group of the kids today at the CDEP program. And um, they were saying that they really don't have a lot, you know. All they do is walk the streets after school. And then something to the extreme of a, a STEAM program, which is S-T-E-A-M, you know, science, technology, engineering, academics, and math. You know, something that can implement all those things because like the kids said, if they had something like that, it would help keep their mind busy. So. Okay. Good. Great. So for you, focus on youth, youth having a safe place to be in Red Wing, feel like kids and okay. Other people, your end result, Sarah. I have a couple. I think one is like a big picture and maybe the other two might be too narrow for what you're asking. Um, the big picture one is it would be nice if no matter who you are, you could be in town and see people who look and feel like you. That feeling of I belong um, and knowing that you're not the only person who looks or is like you okay. um another one i've only been in red wing a couple of years but um just the feeling that um the reputation of ward four and what, the way that people talk about the east end is a little concerning um so maybe changing the way that people talk about our neighbors um, and then I had another one, but I think it's too narrow. I will save it for later. 
You sure? Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Others. I'm just marking this all down. So when I'm looking down, it's just I ready with my pen. Okay, Corey. Um, one thing that I would like to see is that um, we have a community of effector. We built a community that has people who have effective communication skills and um, knowing how to listen with intention. I think so often we've become like really defensive or offensive in our um, communication and dialogues within the community. And I think just, you know, maybe well, we can get into ways to do that, but um, just a place where people can share, they can say, you know, I've got a concern and it's not met with just this crazy <laughs> outcry. And it's just like, oh, let's listen to that idea and see if it has merit, how it can fit in or whatever. Um, and I think if we can just communicate like, you know, decent human beings, we can get a lot further, a lot faster. Okay, great. Thanks, Corey. Others. Guys, you're going to have to speak up because we got a, we got a small team tonight. Sam, do you have anything? Oh, you're okay. Steve? The first thing that popped into my head, it, it's, it's kind of simple and it's nothing anybody has to, uh, it's not a big deal. But when I think of a community, I think of when I'm walking down the sidewalk or I'm walking in a store or any place I'm at is making eye contact with people. So many people, you can be the only two people there and doesn't make any difference what your age is or, or ethnicity or anything. A lot of people just kind of, you know, will look the other way, look at it. If you're outside, you know, look at something else. I'm one that always wants to make eye contact with somebody. I may never have met them before. And I always just say, hi, you know, I'm just that kind of a person. And I think if, even if, let's say, even say this group, just go out between now and the next meeting and make that a conscious effort, whether you're walking down the sidewalk or in a store, you're walking down an aisle of Walmart or, or uh, uh, Apple, wherever you're at, you know, just make eye contact with somebody, just smile and just say, hi, that's all you gotta do. I've started up conversations with people like that before. And uh, my wife, told me I talk too much a lot, but, uh, but when I think of something like that, it's just so easy to do, but a lot of people just don't do it. Okay. That, just, that just popped into my head. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Steve. Liz. Um, <clears throat> I guess I'd like to see more neighborhood engagement, um, really getting to be able to know your neighbors and um, not on specific issues like what's happening in our neighborhoods now, but more just neighborhood participation in, in social engagement. And then expanding those neighborhoods to you know, to start small, kind of a real nuclear neighborhood, and then to start expanding them out. Um, Red Wing is really known for being multi generational, still living in Red Wing, <laughs> you know, three four generations. And um, I mean, we've been here about twenty years, and still get the, you know, where are you from? Even though all three of my children have been. Well, you know, basically spent almost all their life here. Um, yeah. And that that's really hard. And it's, I know it's really hard on, I talked to a lot of new people and that's really hard to feel a part of. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Anybody who hasn't, or Doug or Sam or Thomas? No. Okay. Sam or Thomas, you got kind of like an end result that you would want from anything we that might be implemented down the road? Um, I'm just, just okay. 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 So just to summarize um some of the points that were made that youth have a safe place to be kids. Um STEAM program, you know, education. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, just okay, sounds good. Uh, um, all right. Got it. 
Okay. So I'm just going to summarize real quick what everybody else, what everybody has said before we go to the next step. Youth have a safe place to be kids. The STEAM program, you know, expanding that idea of maybe education, we can get into that more. Um, being in town and, and you can look around whoever you are and you look and see people like you. Um, the reputation of the East End, Ward 4, changing the way that people talk about our neighbors in certain parts of town um, or about the area. Um, the idea of communication, that idea of how are we listening and how are we talking to each other? Um, that idea of not being defensive or offensive. And so building a community of people where we can talk together um, respectfully, I guess, no matter our um, way of thinking. Um, eye contact, that idea of being open, and that's probably both sides. Um, like Steve was saying, can you be the person who's looking, but then if someone looks at you, are you also the person who looks back and says hello, and you don't, you know, shut down, move, you know, whatever. Might be hard. We're used to COVID, but we got to get back on track. Um, Liz talked about the neighborhood engagement, not just for a specific issue, but in general, ongoing social engagement, socially, just being together as a neighborhood, as a small, whether it's a block or a, or a larger area. So those are some of the end games that we're hoping to get to. So what I'd like to do now is, you are welcome to turn off your camera. You don't have to. Sometimes um, if we were in the room, what we would be doing now is just taking a few t few minutes. This helps the introverts and extroverts. And it just, you can kind of take a breath, write down some ideas that you would like to see happen. You can be brainstorming. This doesn't mean that your whole life is attached to this idea. You're just, this is just ideas flowing. I know it's difficult in a virtual environment. And after taking about four minutes and just taking that time to write things down, these are things that primarily would be where the city could assist. So if it's a lot of total school district kind of things, I don't know if we'd be able to, you know, have control over that. But like I said, some of those videos just had ideas. It wasn't meant to like lead anyone to a decision, but these ideas of um, where cities and residents can kind of help either in matching grants or funds or um, it might be, I'm not even gonna mention anything. You guys think of the ideas. Um, when you get done, I'm gonna have you circle your top idea. If you were gonna talk about one idea, which one would it be? When we come back, we'll go around the table. We'll have everybody share an idea. And if you're somebody who's just like an idea and you've got five of them, after we go around, you can share all your other ones if nobody has shared them. Um, and then what we're gonna go through is kind of categorize those into big lumps. Maybe three of you have an idea that kind of is in this category or this category. And we'll run through a series of questions about those either specific ideas or categories so that we can kind of go from up here, all of your ideas and sort of um, by the end, we might be narrowed down to two or three. We'll see, we'll see where we end up, but it'd be good for you guys to just without anybody else, you in your own head thinking about different ideas and then we'll come back in about four minutes and um, share some things out. Does anyone have any questions? No? Okay. I'll see you in a little bit.
Okay, we'll give about 60 seconds for people to start coming on back. We'll have everybody click their cameras on if you can. Okay, so we'll go through, um, like I said, whether you're someone who has one ideas or you've got 10, um, you know, it doesn't matter. But if you've got maybe let's go around the table and just share one idea right now, if you could share only one, you're going to be able to share more. But um, what would your top idea be? This could either be your favorite idea, or it could be just the idea that you think has. The best chance of, uh, you know, working. Um, so, who would like to go 1st? We're just brainstorming. This is total just, you know, knocking around ideas. Doug. Oh, did you have your hand up? All right. Um, so I'm not really good at like big picture ideas, but one thing as we I wanted to get this out there first, we talk about all these uh, good ideas. I think people are going to have is what I really think we need is a is a way to organize um, these ideas, different groups that are working in the city, what they're working on, and um, a central place to kind of make connections between groups, mm -hmm. so that we're not being redundant. Um, mm -hmm. That was one of my worries with the survey we did and kind of coming into this meeting is, are we getting redundant with other groups in town that are doing things or are we doing something totally separate? And I don't know mm -hmm. if we are or not. Um, I just, I don't, I'm not aware of what other groups out there are doing. So I hear Michael talk about the youth stuff all the time, um, which is a great idea. There's uh, this every hand join group out there doing stuff. And I don't know if, if you guys have talked or, or whatnot. Does that make sense? Like a sort of a mm -hmm. almost a mm -hmm. clearinghouse or a command mm -hmm. center to sort of organize what everyone's working on so we don't all you know work on the same problem in separate silos and, and not take advantage of each other's ideas. Yeah, and that's a great idea. And so one thing that we'll talk about tonight, because one thing that has come up in this group, um, it's come up in the 2040, um, all the conversations that we had with folks was one thing that people did not feel was really happening in town was this, this feeling of how do we make people feel more welcome? You know, especially new people. We don't really have something right now that makes new people feel welcome or people who, um, I think Liz said it, people who have been here for a while, but still feel like they're not welcome. So it is something that, like you said, Doug, then we can, you know, you can brainstorm different groups that could help partner on that, um, could help fund it, could help um, volunteer for something. Um, so I think you're right. It's definitely good to always be thinking there are so many groups doing good work all across the community. And we will definitely make sure that what this group thinks about it's not something I want to also be clear. This is not something that we're brainstorming that the advisory team would be in charge of. Implementing you're basically thinking about ideas that could be put into a city budget 
perhaps that is sustainable um, over time and that is not necessarily being done or isn't being done maybe in the way that it could be. And so, um, you know, like you said, it's trying to tackle something that really isn't being done right now, but that's not to say that there would be multiple partners. You could, you know, there could be multiple funders. There could be multiple ways of getting this done. But this idea of um, being more welcoming, let's say that you come up with an idea, well, maybe youth outreach can help with that. Maybe, I mean, we could name a, a, a lot of different, I'm not going to throw anybody out there necessarily, but there are a lot of people who could help with that. Does that, does that make sense? We're not really trying to plan something that the advisory team would be leading and um, yeah, that's fine. What I'm wondering is, is, is there a central place that people in the community, you know, could go to look at what these groups are doing? You know, it, maybe it's something on the website. Here's, here's the place. Here are the ideas that are out there. Here's who's working on these ideas. Yeah, um, there will be because we're that that's what the Red Wing report card project is. And I can send you different. I can send the team more information about the Red Wing report card project. It was meant to be done at the end of 2020 and it was sidelined because of um, the pandemic, but it is something where every category of the 2040 plan will have data associated with it. We did do, uh, the city did do a 2017 report card. There was data on demographics, data on lifelong learning, public safety, um, housing, um, education. It's on our website right now. This will be a new digital and updated more regularly report card. And as part of that data, there will also be, um, what do I want to say? There's like a grid that shows, for instance, in housing, the different things that are happening, the different groups that are working on it. So if you as an individual are interested in housing and maybe specific to homelessness, let's say, you could click into that report card and find out what programs are happening and who you would email or call to get involved with that. So that type of clearinghouse, if you if you you know say that, um, it's also a way for all of us, all the different groups working, can see what each other is doing so that we don't duplicate. So that will be done hopefully by the that's planned to be done by the end of the year. I just wanted to throw that out there. It's kind of an aside, but it's a good point, and that's um, a project that um, we're working on right now. And I kind of sent an email out to everybody asking if you wanted to be kind of on one of those report card groups. So I'll send another email out um, further explaining and asking. Does that answer that a little bit? Oh, a little bit. Um, Doesn't I, help right now. I don't know how, um, how uh, you know, up to date or user friendly. The, I, I didn't realize report cards becoming more of a, of a moving document i understood it to be a thing that happened every couple of years and we kind of mm -hmm. post hoc looked at things and i was i was thinking of something more in the moment um you can go in search find who's working on this and what they're doing uh like a, a pretty up-to-date sort of database but it sounds like maybe that's where we're moving towards with this report card you're talking about is my am i understanding that correctly Somewhat, yes, the data will be updated regularly, but I can't say that there is going to be someone 24 7 updating on every single thing. Well, we really to, you know, every couple yeah. months, something is a little updated, mm -hmm. it's easy, mm -hmm. like a searchable database of sorts, I guess. Maybe that's a better mm -hmm. word for a database, like a searchable database of things that are happening in the community. And if you're interested in any housing or example, um, you can click into that section of the database, and here are the different groups that are working on that. And here's a contact number for the person in charge of that. Correct. Yep. Okay. That is the goal of that. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this idea sort of just again to kind of bring it back is that um, unless, you know, and if you all feel like there is something happening in Red Wing that you think is maybe small or big, but it could be enhanced, let's talk about that. But this idea of people feeling more welcome or belonging, it seems to be kind of a gap. And that's what we're talking about today. Michael? I just want to bring up the fact of um, the overdose, the overdoses going on. That's been a big um, subject as of late, if not for a very long time. So, I mean, 
something, you know, something we need to look into as well. You know, because I mean, with everything that's going out and going around, it's, you know, it's affecting our youth. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, I'm sorry. We can talk about us, you know, me this, me that, but if we're not talking about the children, you know, the youth, you know, what are we doing all this for? So something to look at. Yes, sir. I just felt like I could add to that a little bit with my, you know, my nine to five job. Um, we see a lot of those folks and, and what it seems to be going on is it's uh, an oxycodone that thinks an oxycodone pill. So I believe that's the overdoses you're referring to. Um, most of the time as people think it's oxycodone, it's not. Um, I don't even think it's even fentanyl. It's, it's another narcotic that's in there. It responds to Narcan, but it's very potent. Um, but the pills look the same. And so most of the people I've seen are people that have done this before. It's not their first time using this stuff, but they don't wake up or they wake up real close to, to, to the line being over the edge and they didn't think they did anything different. Um, so that's, not, I'm not seeing as much of it more. Maybe you know more of it. I'm not seeing it in the ER as much. About a couple months ago, there's a real hard run of it. Um, and, and so I don't know if there's a, it's a different batch came through town or how that worked out. But yes, there was definitely a, a month or two where we were seeing a whole bunch of that. And most of it was due to just, I don't want to call it mistaken identity, but basically pills that were being sold as one thing that were not that thing. Um, that really did cause it. It was a big problem for a while. And did that include young people too? Uh, yes, most of the fatalities were younger. Um, most of the people that seemed to be real close to the edge were older. Okay. Okay. And by younger, I mean uh, mostly in the low twenties, not uh, mm -hmm. not teens and stuff. Um, just to clarify. Okay. Okay. All right. Ideas from people? Thanks, Michael. Doug? Mm -hmm. Sarah? Um, one of my ideas was having, when you were talking about the, plan, the city plans for increasing leadership, is mm -hmm. to have a senior in high school program that they would have non-voting um, spots on board of directors for businesses in town to get that initial mm -hmm. experience of what it means to be in leadership and to see how businesses are run. Mm. All right. That's something to, um, we can put down as city right now, youth are encouraged to be student advisors. Um, mark that down for city too. Before I forget to Sam, she's having technical difficulties. I don't think she's on right now. She texted me and said she wanted to get one idea out there, which is the idea of a, um, um, an annual sort of block party, uh, welcome party festival, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, again, looking at redundancy, but something different probably than, you know, maybe something more focused. I wish, I wish she could be on here. Maybe she was thinking more of sort of that. Um, welcome to our neighborhood. Welcome to our block, something like that, but hopefully she'll be able to come on and explain more. Steve. Um, that was 1 of the things I was thinking about is, you know, uh, Red Wing does have a. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's like a welcome wagon. When we moved in, the lady came one day and gave us a bunch of coupons, told us about the city and stuff like that. If we could expand on that and have like neighborhood leaders do this, instead of just having one person that's for the whole city, you know, has some tr trivia she had and, and a bunch of information, if we could somehow or the city could set it up in blocks where uh, let's say I'm the person from, you know, this street to this street, you know, north, south, east, west, anybody that moves in, we get notified by, I don't know if it's the real estate companies get that information or whoever does, you know, when home sales and stuff go through, the only problem would be with 
with rental, somehow we'd have to do something with that. But anytime anybody new moves in, then that leader, that neighborhood could be notified and then they could go talk to them and they could give them more specifics on the neighborhood, tell them about the neighbors and all that stuff and, and you know, maybe make it a little more cohesive and, and uh, then they would have somebody that uh, lives close that if they have any questions or something, you know, a couple months down the road that they could come to you and you might be able to turn them on to one of the other neighbors that can help them with an issue they're having or a question or whatever, you know, just mm -hmm. being more mm -hmm. community oriented if we could. Okay. Great. Thanks. Hey, Liz. I'm going to piggyback on Steve a little bit and just say, like, when I talked about more negative neighborhood um, community involvement and stuff, just maybe making some neighborhood incentives to like um, I, where where I grew up, we always had a yard of the week. It was sponsored by a, a realtor, and um, it was kind of a contest in town to you know beautify your yard, and people would come around and vote in that. Um, but just some. Um, or even like a neighborhood needs and help exchange or like maybe like I don't work Fridays right now. So I'm a lot of times offering different people like, you know, I could watch their child or pick them up or those type of things because I'm home on Fridays or I have more availability on Fridays. But just those type of things where you can maybe help somebody out or if you need something done, um, <clears throat> you know, which neighbor you could go to. Um, to expand on, you know, that not just take your child to work day, but maybe take your neighbor kid to work day, um, show them what you do in the community. Um, and uh, set up some spots. I know not all neighborhoods have it, but to find some spots in the community for like a neighborhood garden. Mm -hmm. um, and then once the neighborhoods kind of become more nuclear, Maybe doing like a neighborhood exchange where now like my neighborhood gets together with the neighborhood across town and, you know, we. We do things together to kind of start building um, more connected to connectivity between neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Good. One, one question I have for, oh, go ahead, Corey. I'll come back to that. <laughs> I can't hear you. You're coming through now. Can you hear me? Now it is. Okay. Now it is. Yep. Um, one of the things we had talked with, um, with like the science and technology and things, I thought, um, a lot of these ideas with the board of directors or, you know, taking someone to work, um, if we could get some of our like engineering department or the, the city lab, um, you know, getting kids into some of those settings would be really, I think a good. Um, an exciting project to get them, you know, working with experiments and and um, watching it, you know, in practice. Um, mm -hmm. And then one of the things too, um, similar to like what we're mutual aid, um, but in our parks, if we had a, you know, a waterproof bin where there were balls and um, rackets and some of the sports equipment that a lot of people have laying around, um, but it's expensive to buy, and if it's there, it's maybe kids are more likely to pick it up and play a game instead of, you know, <laughs> getting into trouble or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. It was just out in the parks. I know it's going to be a nightmare to clean up and pick up and a lot of it's going to get stolen, but um, people are throwing it away anyway. So, um, and then, uh, what was the other one? Oh, and then I was thinking of like a digital mural project or something. We do a lot of great art in the community, but again, getting the science engineering kind of math kids in there. Um, if we did some sort of digital project that was constantly changing and involving, it would be easy to be more inclusive. Um, we'd have to have a buffer or someone to review stuff to make sure it's appropriate, but it could be kind of a cool way for people, you know, to just constantly keep fueling some new energy, whether it's downtown or, you know, wherever. That's what right. I had. Okay. Great. And so a couple of these things, um, kind of to your point, Doug, about kind of melding into what is already being done, um, you know, things like that digital mural project, Corey, would be great for the Arts and Culture Commission, I would think, to kind of consider and think about. I haven't, you know, heard that idea. Uh, maybe it's out there. Um, 
really, really good ideas. I have a question about neighborhoods and what that means to you in terms of geography. You know, wards are really, really big. They're they're really big. Um, even neighborhoods, when, when I lo have looked at old maps, and I think Red Wing had like 16 neighborhoods, but when when you think about your own neighborhood, and when Steve was talking about, you know, from this street to this street, I'm just curious what this group thinks of. Do you think of like a block or two blocks? You know, how big in your mind is your own neighborhood, um, Liz? Kind of as a general thought. Okay. I guess how I would start that is I would look at like garbage pickup and start dividing by like Monday. You know, Monday is a group, Tuesday is a group, those type of things. And then subdividing those down to maybe um, three or four or five subgroups within each of those areas. Mm -hmm. um, I would start smaller, like a couple blocks, and then have a set time frame where they keep expanding out. You know, so like maybe you take, you know, like my my street, which is two or three, four blocks, whatever it is on both sides. And we work on that, building that for <clears throat> six months or whatever it is. Um, and then, you know, the next time we bring in, you know, um, maybe the, you know, one, another three or four blocks in, in that little subdivision, but start off small so that you can build those nuclear connections and then started expanding it on set incremental times. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna add, thank you. Um, I'm gonna ask who who has ideas that, that they were not able to share yet? If anybody has anything. Okay. Oh, Sarah? Um, this is kind of building off of stuff that Michael has talked about before, but I have thought that there are nonprofits in town that focus on youth and to have them partnering together to create a teen center um, and having city support for that. And then also um, where I moved from, it was really popular to have indoor parks. So when the weather was bad, um, they had parks that were inside. Um, and it's nice for parents with young humans to have that <laughs> enclosed space, especially when the weather is bad. So. Good. Great. See nods. Okay, good. So there are, I'm wondering, um, there are some, if, if we look at the categories of things that people have mentioned, and some are, you know, some are sort of that welcome type of thing, whether it's uh, neighborhood leaders, um, uh, gatherings, that kind of thing. Um, even in parks, having things where people feel more welcome to come to the parks where they want to, to be, um, art projects, things like that. And then there have, so that's in one sort of category, it seems, you know, um, creating a more welcoming environment. And the second is that idea of, um both youth and i suppose adult leadership um building up so that we get those ideas into people you know so that people around the, all the different tables in red wing all those tables are more diverse you know building up that kind of um leadership and Do those seem like two categories that you still feel are important? I would go around the table and see, do you, or would you rather focus in on one specific category? One is leadership building and communities do spend time, effort, resources. I mean, none of it's easy, but one is building up more diverse leaders in the community. And when I say leaders, it doesn't have to be your city council. It could be anything. They are a neighborhood champion. They're on the, you know, School board, they decide to run a business. It could be anything. That's 1. The other is. Really grassroots, um. Creating more welcoming environment. I want to can I see a show of hands if anyone feels like both of those are worth. 
this group looking into or if you think we should go in one direction or or not um or maybe you don't have a preference but we're, we'll we'll take some of these and we'll kind of go through some questions that this policy tool goes through it's just questions to kind of see what you think would be worth uh looking into and uh getting more resources for um who who yeah i'm going to ask for a show of hands here and then then we'll see who would like to do both and i'm not saying you do it i'm just saying who would like to in this meeting discuss both liz says yes corey says yes yes i'm seeing most people and doug doesn't care so much and steve doesn't but the rest say yes so we're going to try to cover both hi thomas um unless you say neither one of these are worth it <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you would like to go through a series of questions where we talk about both leadership development and creating a welcoming community. Yes, okay, okay. So let's first go through um, leadership development. We're gonna kind of go through this speed round. It's 7.04 and we wanna go to about 7.50 so that we can, um, oh, what do you got, Michael? Does those suggestions involve the youth? Yes. Yep. Both. Okay. Yep. Both. Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, and then we'll stop with about eight or 10 minutes to go and we'll kind of summarize. We'll see where we're at and, um, and see what we can do for the next meeting. Maybe that involves some of us going out and doing some more research into some of these things and bringing some things back in a couple of weeks. So when we meet back in June, we'll be able to have a um, more in depth uh, discussion and, and, move closer into a recommendation if you feel like that's necessary. Um, when you talk about leadership development, we're talking about youth and adults, and we're talking um, primarily people who don't, maybe who have never thought of themselves, okay? You know, we've talked in this group about reaching um, different populations, different ages, people with different backgrounds, people who may or may not feel like anyone's gonna listen. When you think about the people that you know, and it could be yourself, it could be a family member or a friend. When you think of someone who may not have thought of themselves as a leader. And now either is or moving in that direction, or maybe they're not, and they're still there. What do you in your mind feel like either could make the difference or was the difference? Um, you know, like I said, Northfield with that video, they put together an emerging leaders program. Um, in Red Wing, we have had some examples of things like this. Um, as some of you have been part of this, there was a leaders to end poverty group. There was a citizens assembly group. Um, a couple of years ago, there was something called get on board, trying to get people interested on what, what makes a board or commission member. The League of Women Voters does some things. Um, so there have been things. Um, None of those have been, you know, a sustainable, um, maybe not League of Women Voters, but some of those other ones have sort of been pilot programs. Uh, nothing with specific, you know, and I'm wondering from this group, whether from your own experience or otherwise, what do you feel got you interested? Sarah. I think one of the most important things is one on one mentorship that a lot of people who are interested, but aren't going there is because they're unsure of how to get there or what it will be like once they're there. So to have someone that they trust that they can ask the questions that they may deem as silly, or they might be embarrassed to ask. Oh, Liz. I think um, becoming educated on what leadership looks like to different people, um, that it's not, um, you know, in, in my mind, it's not the person who um, looks good wearing high heels and a suit. That's not necessarily leadership to me. Typically isn't to me. <laughs> it's the person who's willing to do the work and who's lived the story to get to where they are as somebody who's um, known for their, their, their place now in what they do.
others? Is there something that would help you, yourself, other people? Um, would it be worth investing in something like that, Michael? Uh, just for example, today I had a mentor program with my mentee, but it ended up being me having a discussion with not just my mentee, but five, six, seven, five, six other kids on what they feel. And just being able to allow, I, like I sat back and watched them and just them being able to speak their mind and just not feel any bias or just saying how they feel or what they would like to see that would make them not want to run the streets or do whatever, you know, we all know, but whatever. That really opened my eyes is that these kids need somebody to listen to them. I think is the main thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Sarah, then Liz. I think a tangible thing that we could do is in the um, report card, if there was a place for businesses to put board openings and what the expectations are, that sometimes people don't even know, where can I be a leader? Um, mm -hmm. So if there was a place, a localized place that people could go and get that information from. Are you thinking like um, businesses, but maybe also nonprofits, if someone is interested in that realm of um, yes, we're work. thinking of nonprofits. Okay. Like nonprofits that have boards, or if there's um, boards or commissions for the city that have open seats, just a place to see where are there open places. And and some of this too, the, and these are really, really good ideas. And to the point that we brought up again, just so <laughs> so people know. We can come back to some of these where um, we can identify where things are already happening, but where more could happen. You know, so is that mentorship happening in some places? Yes, it is through the school and that flight paths program. But where where is it not happening enough? You know, where could it happen more? How could it happen more? Could we have mentors? Maybe there are folks, you know, like Michael said, when he was talking to the 5 or 6 kids, maybe they, maybe some kids wouldn't listen to a teacher, but they would listen to a mentor, you know? So how do we get kids interested in that? Um, so I think some of these things are also using your ideas and information on making things. Better using, you know, maybe additional resources. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, okay. Um, any other things for leadership when you're talking about what's helped you, what's helped others, things you've seen in other communities that you wish that we could um, potentially do, Liz? Um, with the leadership expansion, I guess I'm interested in developing it if we really do put the emphasis on the diversity. Red Wing doesn't need more of the same. We need the diversity in every aspect of diversity. Uh, to move into leadership positions or to create leadership opportunities for for every aspect that entails diversity because we've it's 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 all the same here. <laughs> I mean there's there's nobody who looks like my two my two oldest children in any leadership position at all. And they my daughters pointed that out when she was three years old for the first time to me. So they obviously see it. They feel it. You know they they talk about it a lot. That um, okay, so adding that focus that yeah, yep, okay, <clears throat> okay, um, and and sort of when we talk about um, kind of going through going through this list, is there um. I guess we'll need a little bit more information because then you can kind of go through this series of questions and ask, you know, um, 
Okay. Before we go to the next, is there anything else on leadership that you feel is necessary? Like Liz said, it needs to have a focus on diversity. Um, is there anything else before that you would want to make sure we don't miss? Corey. One thing I think of, um, you know, even with this, with this group or whatever, um, a lot of times it's hard to have the time mm -hmm. um, to devote to being a leader. And I think especially when we try to reach um, people who aren't currently included, a lot of them um, are going to have some barriers with time, with schedules, with money, with flexibility. Mm -hmm. So I think if we're, if we're going to move in that direction, we're going to have to be really creative in how we, you know, maybe have non-traditional meeting times, non-traditional meeting styles, mm -hmm. um, because I think those are going to be barriers that we might have um, a lot of people that want to participate, but have um, just a real struggle with, you know, they're juggling, you know, kids and daycare and two jobs and, um, and those are people who have great ideas, but they're really, really spread thin already. Um, and for anyone to be successful, you need to have like committed, consistent, um, uh, time or whatever with an organization. So just thinking of how we, you know, can handle that, whether it's, you know, having more, um, like a community sort of childcare area or volunteers that, you know, can pick up some of that slack or whatever. But um, I just think that, you know, kind of the removing barriers is going to be a, um, a big hurdle for us or opportunity uh, to get more people involved. Okay, good. Great. Oh, Liz. Just 1 other quick thing, and I would hope we would really also focus on like the small businesses, the fam, you know, the, 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 uh, small businesses in town, the, the trades, the people that own their own trades companies, because. I mean, those are. Those are incredible opportunities, you know, for like the youth to see to move into those type of things, but, um. You know, I think a lot of, especially a lot of youth, they think, well, owning your own business, you know, how easy is that? That's such a great, you know, you don't have a boss, you can do what you want. And it, it's not about that, you know, but um, we have a lot of really successful small business owners in town that would be able to, you know, potentially share a lot of insight, <clears throat> not just at a corporate level of leadership, but that very, very small, intimate leadership type of role. Okay. Great. Good. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to um, this idea of um, creating a welcoming community. That can be anything from a one time event all the way up to a multi million dollar uh, welcome center. <laughs> and so, you know, it's step by step by step. Um, and the group has. Lots of great ideas here, and what I'm wondering is, um, yeah, I wish we had more of our full group, but I mean, you guys have come up with some really good ideas. So, what I'm wondering here is, um, let's take let's the welcoming portion of it has kind of gone into a couple different categories. And we can take a look at some of these questions about, you know, what, what more would we need to know? Um, so, 1 is this idea and. I don't want to also skip over this overdose issue, Michael. Um, is that maybe something and also the steam that you mentioned is. Are you thinking more that's, um. It seems like that's maybe like off in another my category. Mentality with all this overdosing and everything going on is like, I would like to look into possibly like a, uh, I mean, maybe Miss Larson because you, you you got a medical backfill, correct? And maybe like some type of um, needle exchange program. Mm -hmm. You know, something, something to that extent, not just for addicts who are using drugs, but there are people who are diabetic. There are people who, you know, steroids. It's just, I don't know. It, that's a field that 
I don't know too much about. Okay. There are folks that you can, um, needles you can drop off at certain places that are as far as extra pills. So if you uh, break your arm, you know, and they use pain medication and you're better feeling better in a couple of days, you don't need the rest of it. You can take that down to the law enforcement center. They'll dispose of it. Uh, so these things exist. They're just not well known, maybe. Because uh, yeah. what happens then is like grandma and grandpa end up with the stuff in their cabinet and then like kids get a hold of it and like, you know, things get screwy that way. Uh, I, I, that's how I think it goes or how I've understood it to go sometimes. These things are around the house when they shouldn't be. Kids get bored. They do stupid things. Um, but there's ways to dispose of those types of medications. Uh, you just got to take it out of the law enforcement center. Um, for the most part, um, I for sure you can't take it to the hospital. If you bring it to me, I got I can't do anything with it. Um, but I believe the law enforcement center can dispose of that um, in, in, a, in a way. I think it's just a drop box actually uh, inside the front door. So between the two glass doors, there's a there's a locked box. You can just drop it in there. And so maybe that you know, and it's little things like that. Mm -hmm. We need to get out this more. I think you know. I appreciate that, Mr. Larson, because to be honest with you, I didn't know that. You know what I mean? So. Those are the type of things I think we need to start educating. Yeah, I think that's the word I'm looking for educating the community on it and letting them know. And I'm marking that down too, so we can do that more as a city. One related so thing on that too, um, if I can just kind of chime in, we get a lot of people or that come in that have just been released from jail. Um, and their um, cell phones, when they're taken, when they're put into jail, are usually, they're not plugged in. So they get out, they get their stuff back, but the phone's dead. Um, they have no way to get out of Red Wing. And most of these people that are, that this happens to, it happens to be a drug issue or a, you know, overdose or whatever. Um, and I had one just last week that, you know, this person kind of stood around out front of the store for three, four hours. It was cold. You know, so finally we said, do you want to just come in and warm up and, um, and I ended up getting a phone number so I could call somebody, but I called this person. They thought I was with the county or the jail. And so they're telling me their whole life. So I'm like, no, no, that's, you know, that's not it. But the reality is there were two people that went into jail. They bailed one of them out. The guy that came to get her is another addict who doesn't drive. He lives in a van, but had to bring someone to drive him down here. Um, this person has, you know, he said he's brought her back like eight times. Um, so these people are getting out, they don't have a phone and they don't have any resources. Mm -hmm. So they go back to the same place that got them there three days earlier. Um, so one thing that would be helpful is because I end up using my own phone or we use our, our store phone all the time. If we could get a pay phone back in Red Wing for, because there are a lot of people that need it. Um, and it's a public safety issue. I think um, having something um it's somewhere where they can go where it's not up to an individual business i mean i do it um but like this when i called this guy i mean i ended up having phone issues a day later and i don't know if there was something with his phone and i had you know an issue that something happened i don't know um but i ended up you know she was waiting for him there they ended up you know uh, i sent him down to the quick trip apparently they were there the other guy was in the bathroom and he didn't come out i'm guessing he probably overdosed in the bathroom down there. And that's why his buddy wasn't, you know, it's just, it's a mess. Um, okay. But we, we incarcerate people, but we give them no tools when we let them out. Um, so unless we're gonna do that, it's just, we might as well just put up a big hotel because <laughs> it'd be okay. cheaper. So yeah. anyway, just kind of a side note, but I think there's opportunities there. Yeah, Sarah. I have a realistic suggestion and then a silly one. So the realistic ones is they have charging stations that the city could put into the budget to have charging stations around town with the different things on them. My silly thing is um, I lived in Korea for a year and they have um, in their communities exercise areas that you plug your phone into the park, stationary bike, elliptical, mm -hmm. and it charges your phone as you exercise. And so you'll see people like plug their phones in and then ride the bike really quick for 10 minutes to get a charge going. <laughs> um, so that is like multi positive things happening there. Yeah. Okay. I'm writing all this down. Good. 
yeah, some of these things are going to come from ideas that are just not happening right now. And you see a need and what can we do and what does the council not know about? And what could they think about? You know, um, it seems like, it, you know, one of one of the welcome ideas are events. One is more of a systematic type of thing that you mentioned. Uh, Steve got into a little bit with, you know, this idea of neighborhood mentors or neighborhood champions. And so it's a system of maybe that one on one or family to family, something like that. Um, some, some schools have done that you come in, you've got kids in one school. We pair you with a family. There's something like that. Um, and then another is, um, that people haven't brought up, but it was something that, you know, when we were, um, that is in a couple of the, the strategic plans is this idea of, a um, like a grant program, you know, a group of a neighborhood comes together and. They do volunteer work, perhaps for, you know, dollars, um, and then, a neighborhood gets gets an idea and you know comes together for that. Um, when you think of yourself, whether or not you feel welcome here, or you think of a friend or someone that you know does not feel welcome here. What do you think is a first um, what do you think is a first step on what could happen? Because um when we go through this process, it's basically what will be the impact to what specific area? Um, how have different people been engaged with that and who really benefits from that and who is who is burdened by that? So if you were to think about, um, you know, I, what I'd like to do is we'll follow up with this um, meeting and I will send an email to you with with some with some different questions. But do you have kind of a, an idea of what the low hanging fruit would be? Um, how do I say this? You know, your, your ideas have kind of come. Um, let me see here. You know, this idea that Sarah brought up of an actual geographic area of town, you know, and that idea, what can we do to change that? Maybe it's focusing in on certain areas. Some people would like that. Some people might not. Michael. Um, me personally, I would say engagement. The, the acceptance of being engaged and then uh, acknowledgement of engaging because, you know, it goes both ways. So I think uh, just being able to just engage into somebody like um somebody you didn't you probably wouldn't think you cross paths with in life but at the end of the day it's like man i would have got to know him a lot soon mm -hmm. example um mr larson Nine times out of ten, probably wouldn't even cross paths with him. Be like, oh, that's another cat walking in Red Wing. But we engaged each other to a point now where hopefully we can go have our coffee finally <laughs> and engage each other and pick each other's brain. You know, I think the just the acceptance of being able to do that and the acceptance of just acknowledging it. Do people here go to the neighborhood night out? It, I think, is the beginning of August usually. Um, that can look and feel any way that this community wants to, whether it's successful now, probably in some areas it is and some less so. Does that idea of getting together with neighbors in a very small segment of the community um, you know, so I'm thinking, Michael, about how you say that you and Doug got together. How does that happen? You know, how do we make that happen routinely? Liz, did you have something? Just saying that I've gone to them when they've had them. It does it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everyone feels. You know, and so that's the idea. If we're talking about getting people involved who don't normally feel in, included, 
um, thoughts on that? Does that help with one-on-one -on -one mentorship? Maybe someone inviting you to come somewhere, you know, when you talk about people who don't normally feel like, Hey, that's not something for me. When I go there, I'm not going to feel welcome. People aren't going to look at me the way that I feel like they should, you know, um, how do we get past that? It's not an easy answer. <laughs> Doug, did you have something you were going to say? Oh, you, you kind of touched on it. I was going to say, if, if, taking the example of this um, well, neighborhood thing I've actually never heard of uh, before, but even if you get or you know, host that, you sort of have to have another reason that people would want to interact other than just like geographically being next to each other. Um, you know, something to make them want to engage. So like Michael and I haven't had a chance to sit down and talk, but because they're on this committee and and things like that, like it's sort of, there's a carrot on the stick sort of thing in front of us, right? Like we have a reason that we want to sit down and, and discuss stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which versus these these things that sound nice on the, the face of it, these neighborhood get together things, but I feel like, I don't know, Liz, maybe you can comment on what it was like for you if, if these people kind of came together and exchanged comments about the weather. No, what I was talking about, Doug, is my husband ended up in ICU for several weeks and then back in ICU for several weeks. And neighbors I didn't know came to me. We had just recently moved into this neighborhood and, and greatly supported my family when we thought my husband was not going to make it. Sure. And that was um, very uplifting to me. So geographically, it was important because they also were watching my house. My son had also broken his arm in three places two days prior. So I had a lot going on trying to get yeah. back and forth to mail multiple times a day and be here for my other two, three children. So geographically, having my neighbors watch my house, pick up my kids, feed on those type of things, that was very important to me. Sure. Yeah, That's well, why I said geographically, getting to know your neighbors so that you could help each other, you can start forming those bonds and stuff. I guess what I was getting at there is, is that in that instance, you had, well, it sounds like multiple reasons for that engagement, right? Like there was, there was something going on that caused them to come in and engage outside of that one time a year thing. Um, and that might be the trick to this whole thing is something that causes people to want to repeatedly engage with their neighbors other than just a friendly wave from the driveway. Does that make sense? So so my reason behind doing it is because I felt I was very fortunate that um, I could reach out to a neighbor that I kind of knew from the past, mm -hmm. even though we were very new to the neighborhood, but I would want to make that more, more available or more comfortable to somebody else. And when you know your neighbors, it's easier to, to both reach out to them or for them to come and help, or just to simply say, hey, I noticed this is going on. I heard this is going on. You're just more comfortable because you already know each other. Sure. We're yes. a society of if people are outside, they're generally in their backyards now. People aren't in their front yards anymore. Everybody kind of goes in the backyard and sits around the fire pit. And I'd like to change that that conversation to more being out front with the neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad idea at all. I'm just saying mm -hmm. what how do we get that? What's the thing that mm -hmm. causes that impetus to move towards that goal that you're talking about, you know? um getting people to, to want you just to go play. out and start telling you like inviting your neighbors to come together let them know you want to get old-fashioned neighborhoods going again like when we grew up and played played games at night and stuff you just mm -hmm. go out and start talking and having the conversations mm -hmm. and asking them to come and join you sure have a barbecue that's right <laughs> i like that steve <laughs> How involved does Red Wing get with uh, National Night Out? <clears throat> I know in the previous two, well, last community I lived in for 20 years and the one before that about the same amount of time. So both cities were <clears throat> really involved in the National Night Out. But since everything was canceled last year around the, the state, I don't know, previous, did Red Wing have Good partic uh, participation in National Night Out, where all the neighborhoods they block off streets and set up tables and have uh, uh, potlucks, and and that's when you know new neighbors come out and see, and old neighbors come out and visit each other. And but I don't know what 
Red Wing did for that. We had a really successful one a couple of years back. Um, we live right off Pioneer Park, so we just used the park, but it was just the people who were uh, whose back doors entered onto the park was this neighborhood. Um, it was really successful. I mean, the, you know, the police came, um, somebody had picked up, I don't know where from, a whole bunch of little trinket prizes for the kids. Uh, there were, there was donated food from the community. There was, um, I think that, yeah, I was, was the ambulance, fire truck. I can't remember the police. Maybe the ambulance, the fire truck, they came for the kids to see. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a beautiful night and we had really good engagement. Um, that probably was 2019 ish, 2018, something like that. And of course we didn't have it last year. So. And it really depends on the <clears throat> neighborhood. I just, <clears throat> excuse me, no, because I was in charge in 2019. So we drove around to all the neighborhoods and handed out these slips that we were asking sheets of paper and, um, I remember going to Liz's and that was really well attended and people were having a good time, but you know, some areas of town it, and it, it doesn't matter what area it's just certain little areas in every single area of town is very well attended. And then, you know, some, for whatever reason, and that could be something to where it is something that's already in place. Could some more resources, I don't know, just listening to what you're saying that put be put toward uh, what happens is you're basically a neighborhood champion. And you come to the police department and you pick up this whole thing of uh, giveaways and things like that. Um, it's pretty in the system, but we don't, there are areas that have good participation and not. So, you know, and then what happens kind of depends on the place. You can have barbecue or you could um, just, some people stand out in the middle of the street and just talk. So it kind of depends. Um, but again, that happens once a year. It could happen. I, I don't know. Um, I, it's good to hear what Liz's perspective is. I don't know if anybody else has participated in that in town, Doug. Um, is that, just like give a little more knowledge of this. Is this something where like you would block off a street mm -hmm. and like put stuff in the middle of the street? Like that the yeah. kind of thing we're talking about? Yep. Okay. Yep. I just I hadn't been to one. Um, mm -hmm. well, apparently, I live in one of those neighborhoods without uh, much engagement in those. So. Yeah. Right. And sometimes they happen at those little pocket parks or, you know, some people are in the middle of the street. It kind of, it really just depends on your neighborhood. Um, some people have open lots and some people have been doing it in their neighborhood for 20 years and, you know, but we really don't have a system. I mean, a great system. We do. The police department does a really fabulous job. But if, if your neighborhood champion is kind of turned over or isn't here anymore, what are we, what are we doing? I'm unclear and maybe we do a lot, but um, to build up some of those and kind of look at a map and say, where are we, where do we not have um, places happening, you know, and, and uh, maybe that champion is more than just, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not here to, I'm not supposed to brainstorm. <laughs> so I will not do that. I'll let you guys do that. But, you know, I, I wonder if that is something where, does this group seem to feel like that, you know, Liz seems to feel like that, that would be something that is worth looking into. Um, I can find out some more information about Night to Unite and see how we do things and, um, you know, bring that back to this group. I think we'll have to work um, a lot by email in between the, the next two meetings. Um, for this group's information on June 28th, so after the next meeting, is when the city council meets at a budget workshop. And if this group um, between now and then um, did have some recommendations, they can be small or big, you know, um, that had some budgetary recommendations, it would be good to let the council know before that June 28th workshop. So it could be something that is already happening that you have suggestions for how to make better it could be something new that starts small and builds up. Um, you know, there isn't just tens of thousands of dollars in the budget right now, but there are some, you know, there, there, there are some things that this group could um, request happen. And um, because it is a council priority of building up neighborhoods and strengthening neighborhoods, um, especially in diverse communities and getting um, people feeling more welcome, 
I think there's some opportunity um, for this group to kind of really think of some cool things. So um, I guess I would ask, because we have a small group and it will be a month before we meet again. Is there any appetite for either people looking into some things, researching online or meeting in a smaller group between now and then? Um, Cause we're not going to get further tonight as far as, you know, narrowing in on something, but it sounds like this group would be interested in something like this. So I'm going to leave that open to you to, you know, we haven't asked you to do homework as part of this advisory team. And I don't know if you're interested in that or not. Um, I would, but I want you to, to be able something. to research. Say that again, Michael. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Ms. Oh, Lizzie. No, no. No, I'm talking too I was much. Anyway. Say I'd be willing to host something, a uh, private, you know, a little private get together of you know group members at my place. If okay. you know people wanted to figure something out. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, great, great. Because then I'll send an email out, and if there are um, people who want to meet either on one or the other or both, whether it's this leadership development or um, the idea of more uh, welcoming or both. Um, that's great, Michael. And then we can see by email if people are willing to or want to get together. Um, are there people who want to research some things online or not? I don't want to really just bring things. I think you guys um, have good ideas or know, maybe have thoughts or ideas on what you might want to or not, if this isn't something that you feel, you know, you want to make a recommendation on, that's fine too. I mean, if you, you don't feel really strong about it. Are you talking researching either of the two ideas? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm wondering if maybe one of these two things, one of these two things that we've been talking about tonight is something that perhaps you would want to make a recommendation on. And is that something you'd like to devote more time to in the, in the next meeting and between the next meeting or not? Because we will probably be getting back to policing, but that won't be still for a, a handful of months. Um, I'd like to put together a timeline um, so that so that you all know what you're devoting your time to over the next months of this program through next February. <laughs> That's when we reach 18 months. Um, but because we were planning on doing policing and we're not right now, we didn't plan for that. That's how this idea came forward of, you know, the group has kind of been talking about. It's not just policing, it's the community as a whole. How can we be more welcoming to diverse communities? So that's why I thought, well, maybe the next this meeting and the next meeting we could really focus because it is time when the council does decide on budgets. And if this group did want to put forward a recommendation, now is a good time to do that. Um, So I don't know if we're moving in the right direction of what you want or not. Sarah? I would be happy and willing to join another meeting between now and the next one if that's what folks wanna do to more pinpoint things. If I'm being completely candid, I'm not sure what, I'm more than willing to research something, but at this point in time, I don't know what that looks like, what it would be. Like maybe okay. if you can put all of our ideas together and we can mm -hmm. see it, then maybe something would pop out. But I'm happy to do that if someone tells me to, like, there, okay. research this. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'm happy to help out, too. Um, I just had a kind of thought, and I don't know if we can take these two and make them into one by getting to know our neighbors better, by strengthening our neighborhoods, and then from that kind of have a natural leadership development uh, for those that we meet within our own community because we're strengthening our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's, that's because I, I think idea. it's hard. I think it's hard to find 
leaders when we don't know our community. <laughs> we're mm -hmm. only going to come up with the same people that we already know and we're looking for new leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's good. And I think the other one too, that um, I don't want to forget what Michael brought up, which is specific to youth. Um, and so that can be an area of conversation too, in terms of, we can get you more information on that flight paths. It seems like a lot, you know, some people really had an interest in what kids were in building that leadership and building that sense of belonging in Red Wing. And they are doing some really great work with flight paths, but I bet we could uh, definitely get some more information from McWedlin who's doing that and find out in his mind in the schools um, where they might be wanting to go and can this group or the city, you know, in some way be of assistance in, in that. On that, I would, one thing that I was thinking is that now that we started touring colleges and stuff for my son, you know, colleges are really becoming, um, the, the buzzword is test optional now, you know, the ACT, SATs are not nearly as weighted um, and some aren't even doing them. They're doing them all on the college essay and they're basing their entrance and their scholarships and that type of thing more they're leaning more towards college essays, which I think puts a lot of pressure on kids. I would, I mean, I think there's, I, yeah, you don't have the test, but you also have to write this essay that has to be really, really, really good. And um, if there was some way to the, the, the college bound kids, um, the, the post-secondary kids that, you know, are looking at the scholarships and all, all of them for entrance, I was like, but if there was maybe a group that would help with that, not write it for them, but help with it, help wordsmith it, help proof it, help those kind of things, because colleges have those for like writing resumes and cover letters and all of that. So why can't we help them get into those colleges to earn the degree to need the resume and the cover letters and those kind of things, you know, and in colleges, all, you know, they have English labs and all of that. If they're assigned a 10 page paper on whatever, they've got writing labs, you can go in and help with that. So, but the expectation is you write this really well worded, well written essay to get into school. Um, but then they offer help once you get in. Okay. <laughs> with writing. Yeah. Well, I, I think what I can do is um, put together, you know, right away this week, because it time goes so fast, is put together these notes and sort of lump them into groups. And, um, you know, maybe that is, uh, I'll send you an email, but um, we've done some research. So we have some examples that can, you know, we can show and sort of send you, but it would be nice to meet. And if Michael has, um, Offer to to have some folks at his place, you know, maybe outside in the backyard or whatever. Um, yeah, that would be great. And Michael, if you decide to do it in a park, let me know. We don't have to come to your house if you don't want to. Um, either way is good. Are you still good? I'm always good when it comes to, uh, you know, me and my wife, we have the understanding that when it comes to bringing this community together, we'll do whatever we need to do as our family, as our household, regardless of who the person is or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Sounds good. Okay. I'm, I'm with it. Okay. But I still need to get my coffee in with Mr. Larson beforehand. That, that's <laughs> my, that that's my main mission. I've been, me and Mr. Larson, we've been trying to just you know, schedules really wasn't was so, but I need my coffee with Miss Larson. Sounds good. Sounds good. So I think what we can do from this tonight is put together the things that you guys have said, and also, um, I think next to that, maybe as as far as I know, and maybe this group can also add to it. I'll put down some things that may be already happening in that area. Um, if I know about it, or someone here at the city knows so that everything doesn't seem like a brand new idea. But you will know here are the ideas that you brought up here. Are some things that are already happening that are kind of like that. Um, 
I mean, neighborhood night out is one, I just one example, but, and then, um, I'm hoping that the group, even some people who weren't able to meet tonight can meet before our next meeting and, um. You know, maybe it's something that this group ends up putting forward for um, for something to happen in the future. So we'll we'll do that. I will also send something out. I, I'm hoping that people can take that survey um, that you all put together, and having those one on one conversations might also spark some ideas. You know, if someone's telling you how they feel or what 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 ideas they have. I mean, the idea really is for the advisory team to be 12 people, but that it's also everybody that you talk to, you know, and that you're hearing things and then bringing it back. And so in that way, it's, it's more than 12. It's, it's, you know, kind of ripples out. Um, okay. Um, clear as mud. It feels like we're waiting through mud. Um, is there anybody else just before we leave? We've got 10 minutes and we'll stop a little early. Is there anybody else who wants to either throw out an idea or have something known from what we've talked about here? We've got, we've got some pretty good ideas. Um, and I think some additional research will help us see how other communities have done that. So that we can find out if it's doable here or not. We don't want to duplicate something that's already being done completely, but we also have a lot of people who have some good resources, ideas, and, um. You know, information that could, um, I don't know, maybe something new will happen. Doug. Um, just thinking more about Liz, what you're talking about and finding leaders you know, through knowing your neighbors and developing those leaders. Um, a couple of thoughts I had on that is when we need to define neighborhood, like neighbors, like what size we're going to define that from and um, figure out, yeah, how are we going to find somebody to represent each of those areas? You know, and then that would allow us, like Liz had said, to maybe focus more in on developing leaders. Because uh, right now, to just sort of recommend or move forward on researching leadership more, like we don't have anybody to become a leader. We got to find those people. That might be the first step to all of it. Um, and Liz might be on to something with uh, getting the neighborhoods together in that, in that way. Or if there's another, I don't know if there's a different way to find those people. Uh, who are willing to, to put some time into that. Um, mm -hmm. But there's something I was thinking about um, process mm -hmm. what she had said. Mm -hmm. Yep. And just so this group, I mean, I do want to make it clear that this group isn't necessarily responsible for doing all that. It's more coming up with the idea or, you know, so that as a system, um, either through the city or elsewhere, it would, um, we would want to use, every, you know, use everyone in our community if we can, but whether that there, there are a lot of different ways to s make a system to do that. It's not easy and it does take time and people and energy, but um, I just don't want this group to go away tonight thinking we're talking about something that you all have to implement. That's not the case. Do you know what I mean? You guys are thinking about the systems and the possibilities um, of what we as a community, whether it's the city, City, school, county, you name it, nonprofits, you know, that could potentially help to um, either improve or implement. So I just want to make that clear. You're not having to come up with something and then do it. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I do think something will happen from this. I don't think that this was two hours of your wasted time. I've gotten some good ideas to write down from all of you, and then I will connect back with you by Friday, the end of the day, Friday afternoon. That is my deadline. Um, and something will come of it. So, all right. Anybody got any last words? Otherwise, we're going to click off with eight minutes early, and that's never happened. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for your time.